What are the biggest comp mistakes that we make as jazz guitarists and how can we improve them? In today's class I'm going to be going through five of the biggest comp mistakes that I see in both my students and even sometimes in my own playing too and I'm going to offer some suggestions on how you can improve each of these things to take your jazz guitar comping and your chords to the next level. So let's get straight into the class. So the first and probably the biggest comping mistake that I see is that your comping is too loud and also too busy. So I think sometimes as jazz guitarists, you know, we've, um, we can play fast and when we get into these comping situations it's quite easy to try and play every chord that we know and you know play a lot of chords and a lot of rhythms when sometimes less is more contrary to what you might hear Malmsteen say you know how can less be more more is more sometimes when it comes to jazz guitar chords less is more and you know this is one of those things that if you want to improve it it's actually quite difficult to practice it because you know the art of comp comping or accompanying is an interactive skill really so I know you can practice chords and rhythms and there's a lot you can do in the practice room but for this particular tip or technique then it's something that is much easier to do on the bandstand although there are a few good examples of this one of my favorite accompanists is the great Jim Hall and if you listen to the recordings that he did with Paul Desmond, one thing that I found really interesting when I was first checking those out is that if you listen to the music overall, I think it's quite easy to get focused on the soloist and maybe neglect the comping a little bit, which is probably why you know, the comping um, doesn't get as much thought as the, the improvisation. But anyway, sometimes when Paul Desmond is taking a solo, Jim Hall will actually sit out for an entire chorus so he won't play anything you know maybe a bit longer and you know when his comping comes in on the second third chorus or whenever it is it's even more effective when you hear it so sometimes the best thing you can play is nothing so maybe the next gig you're at or the next jam session you could just try playing nothing for a chorus and then coming in the second chorus or the third chorus and you know the general comping I always find it good to you know not like I said in the initial um, you know, beginning of this tip don't be too busy don't be too loud you're there to accompany someone else and make them sound better it's not always about you and you know you show enough how many chords um, you can play so that is comping tip number one your comping is either too loud or too busy okay so let's move on to the second um, tip so the second tip is a lack of rhythmic variation so I guess when you're, especially when you're new to jazz guitar chords and playing and you know looking at chord charts and things, it's quite easy to just hang on to one rhythm, especially uh, on a downbeat and towards the beginning of the bar, to help you negotiate the chords. And you know, indeed, that is a good tip if you are new. You don't want to be, you know, playing the hippest rhythms that you're ever going to play um, straight from the get-go. Sometimes you want to have a set solid rhythm that you can play and carry on while you know you're getting the chords underneath your fingers but once you know you've worked with a technique and you feel confident and proficient with the chords then I think it's a really good idea to add some rhythmic variation so how do you do that and how do you study it that is the question so I think that you know as an accompanist you should feel confident using a variety of rhythms on different beats of the bar and what I've done is I've actually written out three rhythmic etudes to help with this very problem. So um, all these etudes are in my new book called Beginner Jazz Guitar Chords that is listed and linked in the description below this video. And within that there are three different rhythm etudes that you can do which I purposely, you know, they, they progress in difficulty. So the first one isn't too bad, and then they get more and more difficult as you get through them. And they're over common standards, they've got audio examples with them, and they're going to help you play and feel confident in the different beats of the bar, and they're going to help you, um, yeah, not be stagnant in the rhythms that you play when you're comping. In fact, I've actually got one example um, of one of these etudes that I can share with you now, and this is one of my Skype students 
playing one of the etudes over at Jazz Blues. So we'll go to this clip now so you can check it out to get an idea of what I'm talking about. So let's roll that clip now. Okay, so hopefully within that you heard what I was talking about there, you know, that um, Etude wasn't too heavily on beat one or anything like that. There was anticipation, syncopation, and these are all things that can create rhythmical interest within your jazz guitar company. Okay, and again, that book is listed and linked to in the description below. If you haven't bought it yet, then go and grab it. Um, you won't regret it. So, the third thing is not enough variation with the right hand so i think you know when we are comping um other things i think it's quite easy you know if you were thinking of something like autumn leaves i think it's very easy to just kind of get into actually comping using you know the right hand in in the way in which it's most often associated you know so kind of like um like this so a one two three four <laughs> Which is a great thing to do you know there's a, always a time and a place for that but you know within that you know and I'm not talking about necessarily using the finger stand or using a plectrum but within the right hand you know you can often get some more arpeggiation and things like that rather than just kind of strumming chords as single ent entities you can create a bit more interest you know hitting strings individually and I think that's you know something that's often overlooked um, you know to create a bit more variation so that's the third thing not enough right hand variation so you know you can work on that if you're a finger style player or a plectrum player you know just start arpeggiating with a few chords and you know see what you can come up with really that can create a nice contrast to just kind of playing in the typical manner of um, you know kind of strumming um, the chords so to speak so that is tip number three okay tip number four which is probably I, sh I feel like this is not really a list of order but I feel like I probably should have mentioned this sooner and that is that you are too reliant on the bottom two strings for navigation across the fingerboard so what that means is you know if you're playing and you're looking for a certain chord you know you're always looking for where the root is on one of these two strings you know and it's a common problem and you know obviously if we think of most pop and rock and you know blues backgrounds there is really not much need for navigation beyond that on the root on the sixth or the fifth string you know really so you, you can quite easily see how that problem is created but certainly as you move into things like drop two chords extended chords quarrel chords all these chord voicings rely on you not you know holding on for dear life to uh, you know having a root on the sixth or the fifth string so I do recommend you know learning those chords first if you're new to jazz but when you start learning things like drop two chords and the other chords that I mentioned then you know you really want to start to feel like you're not really holding on to the root on the sixth and the fifth string so one way in which you can work on that is knowing the notes on the guitar fretboard all over really you know if you want to try and find say an F on every string there can be no doubt about where that is you want to you know try and do things like you know start and, and play every note you know you can do a different note G and try and find them all across the strings. If you're fairly new to that, that's uh, you know quite a lengthy process of which could take a few weeks or even a few months, and you've got to do a little bit every day. But really, you know, if you want to um, succeed with jazz guitar chords, you've got to know what the notes are on the other strings um, for 
all sorts of reasons to be able to have navigation beyond the bottom two strings and also if you're playing a nice chord and you want to adapt voicings and things um, within a chord that's not going to happen if you're just you know clinging onto these you've got to know the notes all across the fingerboard so that is point number four to relying on the bottom two strings for navigation. So the final point is um, almost, I guess, <laughs> contradicting to the first point that I said, which is not enough chord movements or inversions. Okay. So what I mean by that is, you know, if you've got one chord, you don't have to, you know, splatter every inversion that you know, you know, in, in two or three seconds. It's not about that. What I mean is you, if you're playing something that's got one chord for say two bars, four bars, that you know you can create some interest because even you know with rhythms, rhythmical interest, you know if you've got a chord for an extended amount of time, you want to create harmonic interest as well. So that's where you knowing your inversions and your chord movements really comes in handy. And again, some of those are in the book which I keep on plugging, beginner jazz guitar chords, um, which I may have mentioned about. 10,000 times is listed and linked to in the description below and you know that goes into some ways how you can create more harmonic interest really um, by doing things like you know playing drop two chords to static chord in um, static chord harmonies and even diatonic triads in and string moving voices and even things like You know, so if you're comping over an A minor, for example, you've got options and colours available rather than just hanging on to one chord. Um, so that would be the fifth thing. Not enough chord movements or inversions, I guess to sum that up, you know, not enough harmonic creativity, you know, when, when you're playing the chords. So those are the five top biggest comping mistakes that I see um, amongst you know jazz students and certainly amongst um, you know beginner jazz guitarists. So what do you think of these five tips? Do you agree with them? Is there any that I missed? If I have please share them in the comment section below and um, we can have a discussion about them there and carry this video on. So if you did like this video I'd really appreciate it if you could actually like the video and if you subscribe to the channel by clicking subscribe and then uh, ticking the bell then you'll get notifications when I have new video classes available as well so thank you for checking this video out good luck with your jazz guitar comping and yeah I hope you enjoyed it thank you <laughs>